This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe, and let's get right into the news. Well, Jim Jones keeps going, reminding people that Mace got ran out of Harlem back in the day. Uh, I remember when he disappeared. I never knew why. And then, you know, once you get into, you know, a couple years later, you start realizing that, oh, Mace left, ran out of Harlem. Because, uh, and then, you know, we learned all the details within the past couple years when Cameron and him were going through it, that uh, Mace was, you know, first of all, Jim Jones just added a little bit to the story that Mace was kind of like a guy in the neighborhood that they took care of and he didn't have, he didn't know how to get fresh like everybody else and everything. So when he got on, he just like, you know, wanted everybody to kiss his butt and they didn't. So... It didn't work, you know, didn't work the way he wanted. And then he started a riff between two guys like uh, Baby Man and Pop Lotti. Uh, I guess like he was close with Baby Man. Baby Man used to like protect him. There's a whole deep thing to this story that uh, I haven't reread in a while. But, uh, you know, something about him smashing like Baby Man's baby mom. And then, you know, stuff got uncomfortable. He was yapping all the... Uh, all money out or what, what was it called money what was his click called with loon and everybody money out or something anyways they they uh he was yapping all their chains and everything it was the name of that album that they all came out with i can't remember but anyways um wow you know it's like and then mace he had a uh, coup to love right i thought he was i don't know you know it's like it, Mace, I remember when Mace went, you know, he turned to uh, religion. He had dropped, what, two albums on Bad Boy at that point. Uh, Double Up was okay, but the first one was the best. You know, we know that. I mean, it was classic. Mace dropped a classic album, his first album. Very rare. That's why, that's why he's so loved. That's why he was one of my favorite artists, you know. He's like, he's just one of my favorite artists. But, you know, when people put Mace and Cam running against each other, you, you can't it's almost like it's almost like kind of like it's kind of like the Jeezy situation, but not because Cameron can really rap and Cameron has a lot of hit records, right? Undeniably hit records. Um, but what I like about Cameron more is that, like, you know, Mace when he did that deal with everybody, you know, uh, Loon and everybody on Jermaine Dupri's label, that was a cash grab. And he didn't really see the whole thing through. Cameron put a bunch of people on and saw the whole thing through. Jumped in the videos, this, mixtape. Like, they had a long run. Mace was quick. Three years, you know, and he was gone. Gone, gone. Like, it was over. Cameron built his way up. You, saw, you know, it was a long, you know, over a decade, you know, of just consistency. Um, Yeah, so... I don't know. Mace will probably respond to this like next year. You know how he is. <laughs> he, take, he takes a year. He still hasn't released any music that he promised to release during the Oracle Cameron times when we dropped Oracle and Cameron dropped Entertainment. He's like, yo, I'm dropping a whole album. Never did. <laughs> and I know, I know some friends of mine that were in studio and heard it, you know? So it's like, it exists, but he never dropped it. And it's like, come on, man. You know, it's like, how are you going to, like, get people all... Ex like, people are always excited when Mace comes back. Every time, you know? When he came back with 50, when he came back with Diddy, you know? Like, people get excited. They came back. They were excited when he came back with um, Cameron. But he always lets you down. That's what's sad about it. Um, everybody flamed the Kanye West shoes. They do look a little spooky. They kind of look like... Uh, phone deposits on steroids. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> phone deposits on steroids. Because it's like people were saying like, uh, yeah, Yeezy Boost, uh, just dump it in a bunch of rubber. It looks like it's just like they're just molding things out of clay and just putting them on people's feet. They're huge. Like three times the size of your foot. And I'm not, no, I'm not a fashionista or anything, but I'm like, these are... I, I, these are crazy, man. These look wild. I mean, is the performance crazy on them or something? I mean, what is it? Do you bounce? Do they have little trampolines inside? Like, what's going on? 
Some people say they dumped it in marshmallows. Like it just, people were flaming these on Vine. People thought they were joke. He was joking, but you actually completed this shoe. Wow. The first Yeezys were awesome. He had a couple of them that were good. But some of them are just weird. Like this, the, the skeleton scandal, the sandals that like, <laughs> I don't know, man. DeHaven, um, the guy who's always talking about, you know, I guess this is a guy Jay-Z used to hustle with, right? He is, you know. And he got pinched and went to jail for a long time. Now, Irv Gotti's always talking about Jay-Z was moving a hundred brick, this and that. It's like, we know that's not true. But I don't. I never thought Jay-Z didn't touch anything. Obviously, he knew the game. DeHaven said, just recently came to his defense during the phase on love interview, you know, he was like, Jay-Z never did anything. How would you know? How would you know, DeHaven? Like, I mean, how would you know phase on? You know? So DeHaven defends Jay-Z and says, No, 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 I taught him the game. So he knew the game. And I don't think Jay-Z was moving like keys, but he was he was moving something. A lot of people were. It's not that far fetched. Uh, DeHaven got dissed on the Jay-Z song before. You know, they, they've had their own issues. But uh, DeHaven, I do like the fact that DeHaven does defend the truth, at least. He doesn't just let uh, lies get told, you know, about somebody even that he might not be super cool with, you know. Um, then we lastly, we got, you know, DJ Khaled has a podcast now, of course. Okay, everybody has a podcast. And... Uh, on this one, Diddy talks about Biggie writing the victory rhyme, but Jadik has claimed to write this rhyme on Drink Champs. So it's like, who wrote the victory thing? You know, who wrote it? Did they write it together? What happened? Because <laughs> like now I'm confused. <laughs> so many different stories told about the past. This is something and I'm not, and this has nothing to do with the Diddy and TJ Khaled thing. I've noticed this a lot lately. Uh, lately, as people time goes on say 10 years people try to rewrite history in their interviews i've been seeing this a lot lately because i'm part of the some of the history they're talking about a decade ago and it's hilarious to me how people try to rewrite their history they don't like how they they don't like how things transpired 10 years ago so they try to rewrite it a little bit so they look like the good guy and that's just lame Admit your faults, admit your shortcomings, and be thankful you're at where you're at today. Live your truth. Don't live don't live a lie. Some people really enjoy telling a different version of their past. And that is weird. Let's be honest. Okay? Very weird. <clears throat> Anyways. I hope you guys have a great day today. Um, stay consistent. It's the weekend. I mean, it's always good to just keep pushing. You know, like you can take the weekend off and start the week fresh. Or you can use the weekend to start another project or to work on your passion or to work on a skill you want to work on. It's always good to keep developing yourself. Uh, I've realized this myself lately. Even if it's a small amount of time to divert some of your energy, not just towards work and towards bettering yourself, whether it be reading, working out or something, it's very important to keep improving on yourself. Um, I've seen some of you in the chat saying you're going back and getting your GED program and, uh, and this and that. You know, I mean, that's great. You're bettering yourself. Some people didn't complete high school, you know, and I, I, I think it's great that you're pushing forward and I wish the best on all your endeavors that you're working on if you're you know trying to go back and get your GED or you're trying to go back and or you're just trying to better yourself lose weight or you're trying to just learn new things I mean you never know how your mind is going to process that it could be it could actually lead to something you the unexpected you know because when you feed your brain new knowledge and everything it's growing uh you can make sense out of things that you it's weird like you might start to solve problems you didn't think you could solve before because your mind is just stronger and you have a different perspective on life perspective is everything and 
I was lucky early on in my life to have different perspectives and be able to look at things differently and not be closed-minded. Uh, it just happened like that. I didn't force it to happen. But uh, perspective is everything, man. And reading and just doing things, period, you know, trying to better yourself does give you different perspective on life, you know, doing research, learning about topics you didn't know, even working out and stuff like that. It, it, it gets the blood flowing better to your mind. It's weird, but uh, just, you know, keep bettering yourself. That's what that's the to sum it all up. Just keep bettering yourself because we have a short time of life. It, se it, it seems long and short at the same time, you know, and we got to make the most of it. I appreciate you guys so much. This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. I'll check you guys in the next one.